um, something that's way bigger than tonight's game or the game of basketball itself. And for Badger Nation, those that are out there tuning in, listening, uh, if you can, whatever your philosophical, spiritual mode is that you do, or if you can send some good thoughts and prayers to Walt McGrory's way, um, and Walt, if you're listening um, or watching anything or your family, um, just let you know that we love you here in Madison and um, are thinking about you and praying for you. So, it, like I said, I, I'm hoping this reaches Walt. I think it will. Um, but if, if uh, all of you out there listening can keep him at your forefront and send, send a well wish or a um, a thought his way would be greatly appreciated. Um, regarding the game, uh, obviously, defensively, we're a work in progress. That's, anyone can see that. I thought in the second half, things started to, I found a group that really, I think, played well together um, and covered for each other and, and did some good things. Uh, obviously, John Blackwell, Kamari McGee, I thought he was great contributions off the bench. Uh, Tyler Wall, really efficient, you know, to play, you know, to take five shots and end up with 18 points. The same thing for John with 18 minutes and 18 points. It's really efficient uh, basketball to get to the line 40 times. We knew we wanted to play through the paint and, and play on the rim, and, and we did. And um, you know, credit to Robert Morris for knocking down some shots. Some were, you know, some were our undoing or Miss Q, some of them, they hit some tough shots. And you got to, you know, obviously you, you acknowledge that when that happens. And then you try to correct the ones that, that uh, if we made mistakes on them. But, you know, again, keep pushing and, and battling in the right direction. The group has been resilient. They bounced back Wednesday after getting home at 3 in the morning on Tuesday, a Wednesday morning from Providence and with some plane issues. And no, there was no feeling sorry for yourself. The coach guard's going to make us practice again and hard and get after them. And they, they responded really well. And same thing on yesterday. And um, like I said, just uh, proud of the guys that how they just, I always tell them, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So when I call them your name, you're ready to go and you're not in a different frame of mind. So I um, thought we did some better things in the second half and um, were able to finish out the game. Questions? Go ahead, then Jeff. Nick, go ahead. Hey, Greg, obviously John had a major impact, like you referred to, scoring. I can think of a couple possessions he, he kept alive on the glass. Just what stood out to you the most, and, and specifically, how is it so impressive for a player so young, so early in his career? Yeah, I think the biggest thing with John that jumped out early is just, and I saw this when watching him in high school at AAU, just his defensive awareness, you know, puts him in, he rarely gets out of position. Now we got to work on not fouling jump shooters three-point shooters, um, but the, the awareness, I think, his head's on a swivel. He's always typically in a stance. Um, offensively, he has a nose for the ball. You see him you know, get us some extra possessions, and that's not the first time he's done that. He's just efficient. You know, He doesn't, for the most part, doesn't take bad shots. I thought he got better tonight at playing off two feet in the paint um, and, and getting to the free throw line. So those are all steps that things maybe a week ago he didn't do as well specifically playing when he did drive it to the paint, um, you know, playing off two feet, and getting contact, and um, getting to the free throw line. So there's you know, it's, there's a lot of things he's got to get better at. But I think the thing that gets young guys on the floor is um, on the defensive end, you can't, you, know, you have to be reliable um, and dependable to, um, you know, and, and he's, like I said, his awareness is, is beyond his freshman uh, class that he's in. Jeff, Jeff, Greg, Greg, kind of on the flip side of that, you, you mentioned the other night at Providence, a guy like Klesman has to keep, stop following. Like there was a sequence where he followed, trying to reach in. Is he trying to do too much, and is Connor just in a funk on both ends of the court right now? Because he couldn't keep his man in right. front of him. What do you need to get? Yeah, those guys? I think Connor just we got to get back in a rhythm, you know, and I, I probably poorly answered Ben's question out there in Providence the other night about Connor, and, you know, he. He's practiced more consistently here lately, and I actually put him over on the scout team the last two days and let him really run around and get, you know, 
um, get the back loose, and it's it's good. He's fine. He just needs to get back into a rhythm. That happens, and I've done that in the past to get more reps, feel the ball, run around, get a lot of shots up. Um, so for him, I thought he was cutting and moving better in practice. Um, but defensively, obviously, you know we've got to continue to help him be better at keeping the ball in front of him, and and it's balance, it's technique, it's uh, um, so you know he knows it, and uh, and he knows that hey, I'm gonna you have to be able to guard, you know, you have to be able to guard. So we'll help him get better with that. Is, is Max trying to do too much right now? I, you know, I think just uh, I don't know about too much. It's just don't. I guess that's a good way to put it, Jeff. Just don't, you don't need to hit the home run play every, you know, enough to steal a pass. Just stay solid. Just stay, stay solid. And if you're solid long enough, you'll, you'll wear them into taking a bad shot or turning it over. You don't have to, you know, like I said, try to hit the home run on every play and the reaching and flapping. And that's a, it's a habit he's got to break. And, um, so. Get it back, coach. Greg, you guys yep. were over six from behind the uh, three point line in the first half, but then shot what three of seven in the second half. What was your message to the team about three point shooting at the half if there was a message? There wasn't a message. No, we didn't we didn't talk about much offense at halftime. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> the other end of the floor. Uh, Greg, you guys were narrowly rebounded. Um, just how would you evaluate, out, narrowly out rebounded, excuse me, how, how would you evaluate your team's performance on the glass against what was a pretty small lineup out there? That really, with, with shots bouncing every which way, and, and there was a couple of missed blockouts, but by and large, I, I don't get caught up into the what the numbers say. Um, number one, you know, if they're banging in threes, you aren't rebounding those makes, so. And for us, we shoot what fifty three percent. So there was a couple here or there. Some of them were also tipped that you know long shot, long rebound. We collapsed too much, but um, you know for the most part, a decent job. I'll, I'll break down the tape and get more specific, but um, I don't think that was the, that wasn't something that I was overly concerned with. But maybe I'll find something on tape that'll give me a different thought. Go ahead. Obviously, you want to take advantage of the size and go to the interior a lot, but mm -hmm. did you feel like before that one late run when the three-pointer became a little bit more hard, that the, maybe the offense was a little one note, you were trying to force it in there a little bit? Well, we, when we when we got it in there, we did some good things. We had 40, 42 points in the paint, shoot 40 free throws. That's, you know, that means you're attacking the basket and playing in the paint. Um, you know, and that's, that's a good recipe that if you're not shooting it well, you can still score points by putting the ball near the basket and getting fouled. So uh, to have 42 points in the paint and shoot 40 free throws, that's a pretty good combination. Um, I mean, heck, score 78 points on 66 possessions. Again, offense, you got to get better defensively. Uh, but I like the fact that they stayed true to throwing the ball inside and taking advantage of what was our advantage. Ben. Go ahead. Yeah. Great, you guys chart everything. With, uh, tonight aside, have you liked the looks that your guards have taken from the perimeter this year? For the most part, I know some have been rushed in certain situations, but for the most part, have you just liked the looks and they just haven't fallen to this point? Mm, I would say there was some tonight that because we had such an advantage and because we were we were in the double bonus and by the 13, 14 minute mark, why would you crank them up from the perimeter if you don't have to? You can just pound it away, and, and they get the better threes. Um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll break down every shot and see, um, but I, you know, we get the bonus. We got to keep attacking that paint, keep following guys out. Better in front of your coach. Yeah. Uh, AJ Store took a pretty high volume of shots tonight, shooting three of ten from the field. Obviously, not a lot of those falling. What do you think about his development so far this year and him continuing that? A high volume uh, of shots in, in a game like tonight. He's learning. He's learning what's a good shot, what's not a good shot. He's learning how to play off two feet in the paint and what the result is most of the time if you don't against, you know. Um, he's learning the defensive concepts and the attention to detail all the time. 
Um, so I think for him, I, I, I always view first year transfers just like I did with Kamari a year ago as freshmen. They're learning, you know, they haven't been in college that long and they're completely learning a, a new system. So for, you know, any transfer coming in the first year, the attention to detail that we require um, constantly on specific on the defensive end. And then offensively, he can get there. Just let's let's get to the free throw line. You know, he's at the basket. Um, and we can make life a little easier on ourselves by playing off two feet and getting contact. And um, maybe not as taking as high degree of difficulty of shots. One more question for Coach. Go ahead. Coach, with a player like Kamari McGee playing 16-46 tonight, do you feel like you have more depth at your disposal on the roster this year and that we might see the playing of the hot hand a little more often uh, going on the stretch? Yeah, I, I tell them all the time. I, I don't, you know, I want to make sure that we have we have a positive outcome for Wisconsin. And whoever that is, you know, if it's different guys at different nights, yes, we do have depth with this team. Uh, Kamari gave us, Kamari practiced well for two days, really well. Um, and I felt he could give us a little, you know, a little juice, and, and he did that. I think, you know, making some adjustments there with getting Chucky off the ball a little bit and, and off the ball defensively too, where he could chase screens and stay attached with guys. Um, and Kamari was able to heat up the ball and do some good things defensively. And um, it takes a team. So it doesn't matter who it is, as long as it's Wisconsin and somebody with one of our jerseys on, that's where we want the positive contributions from. Okay, thanks, Cole. All good. All right, thank you.